All right, advanced algebra two, fourth and fifth hour. These are the notes for Thursday, 319. It's going to be short and sweet. We are continuing our review of what we've done so far with exponentials and logarithms. Okay, so today we're going to look at one thing we're going to look at is simplifying. Remember that we can treat these e's, which we know that e is equal to 2.72. Okay, and we have a button on our calculator for e. But we can also treat them just like they were variables. So if this had an x squared times an x cubed in it, we would add those and get x to the fifth. We will do the same thing here with e and get 6e to the fifth. Now, if this is something we can do, I, what I mean is there's no variable in that exponent there. We can punch in our calculator e to the fifth power and times by 6. So we can do that. So we should, and we get 890.48. We're not always going to be able to do that, as you'll see in some of these next two examples. But if we can, we need to do that. All right, simplifying. So again, we can just act like there is, if those are, like those are regular variables there. Of course, the 4 over 18, we can divide by 2 and get 2 ninths. Now, when we divide, we subtract. Okay, so just realize we'd have two options here. We could subtract 2x minus 5x and get negative 3x, or we could subtract 5x minus 2x and get positive 3x. We want to avoid that negative if we can, so we need to use positive 3x. Now, what's that mean? Well, 5x is bigger than 2x, and it's on the bottom, so our e to the 3x needs to go in our denominator. Okay. Number three, my old buddy, that we're going to get, we're going to get this. Remember, negative exponent. How do we make a negative exponent positive? Well, you move it. This one is sitting in a numerator, so we will move it to a denominator. And then our exponent becomes positive four. Now, what do we have going on in this denominator? Well, we've got two things. We have six to the fourth power. Punch that in your calculator. Use that uh, very, or exponent button on your calculator. That's 1,296. The other thing we have going on is e to the one-half power x raised to the fourth. And we know that when we raise a power to a power, you know, x squared times x to the seventh, we would add those and get x to, or excuse me, multiply them and get x to, whoops, back up. We would add those and get x to the ninth. If we raise x squared to the seventh power, we would multiply them and get x to the fourteenth. So we need to multiply, and 1 half times 4 is 2, so this becomes e to the power of 2x. Now again, in both the answer to number 2, there's a variable in that exponent, and the answer to number 3, there's a variable in that exponent, so we can't punch those in our calculator. So we just leave them as e to the 3x in number 2 and e to the 2x in number 3. Okay, let's brush up on converting, because remember this is going to be important to us later on, so let's... We're going to convert from logarithmic to exponential and exponential to logarithmic. Okay, and let's just real quickly remember how this works. We know for a fact that 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 cubed is equal to 8. The logarithmic equivalent of that would be log base 2 of 8 equals 3. So you heard me read it out loud. Call that a base 2. Well, this is a base of an exponent over here. So those are in the same place or the same thing, bases. Remember my other little point, the answer to a logarithm. So whatever is over here on the other side of the equal to sign, where does that come from? I always say the answer to a logarithm comes from the exponent. The exponent is 3, so the answer to our logarithm is 3. Also, this 8 in this logarithm is called the argument. That will come, that will be important later on also. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at these two and see if we can't figure this out. Remember, it's log base something. Well, what's the base of my exponential? X plus 5. Then there's going to be equal to something over here. Where does the answer to a logarithm come from? It comes from the exponent. Well, what's my exponent? 3. And then I've got my 29 sitting in there. Now, remember my little trick of the hook. We can use the hook right here to check ourselves. And we would say to ourselves, how does the hook work? Well, it's x plus 5 raised to this power 3 equals 29. And that is what we have, so we know this answer is correct. 
Number seven. And also remember you can pause these videos at any time. You can, if you want to work the problem ahead of time and then play the video to check your work, I would encourage you to do that. Okay. Log base something. What's my base? Three. So log base three. What's this thing going to be equal to? Whatever this exponent is, x plus two. And then my seven just fits in as the argument. Again, we can do the hook to visually check ourselves. Three to the power of x plus two equals seven. That's what we had. It's written backwards, but that's okay. Now, if you understand that hook, then these next two will be easy for you to do. I'm going to do these two with the hook and then I'll turn around and I'll do them again with Mr. Patterson's method. You can use either one. All right. The hook tells me, remember how you draw your hook. You circle the base and you draw your hook back towards that logarithm. Well, what does that tell me? That's telling me x plus one, or excuse me, x minus one raised to the second power. So we would need to have parentheses there equals 15. And bingo, there we go. Number seven, you know, if you're good at that hook, you want to be good at doing it backwards. You would start with your base, 3x. What's it being raised to? Power 12. We also need parentheses here. What's it equal to? 131. Okay. Three to the power of x, excuse me, 3x to the power of 12, the quantity 3x to the power of 12 equals 131. And you must have those parentheses. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to show you Mr. Patterson's method and you'd be free to use either one. Okay, what Mr. Patterson would say is you just take this x minus 1 and you slide it over here and you bump the 2 up into the exponent so it looks like this. Then it's just like you erase that log base x minus 1, you drop your 15 down and you get 15 equals the quantity x minus 1 squared. You would have to have parentheses. Okay. That's the same answer I get, it's just, just flip-flop, which is okay. All right, so on number seven, Mr. Patterson, we're just taking the 3x, slid it over, bump that 12 up as an exponent, so you get 3x to the 12th, and what's it equal to? Well, he would drop all this, and it would be equal to 131. Again, same answer as I got, except it's flip-flop, so you're okay. And again, you have to have the parentheses on these two. Okay. Remember, why do we have to do that? Well, if we write this as x minus 1 to the 12th, only the 1 is getting raised to the 12th. If we write this one as 3x to the 12th, only the x is getting raised to the 12th. So that's why we have to have parentheses on those. Okay, do your homework. And hope everybody's doing well. And we'll see you tomorrow.